Hello, it's Evangeline again, and today I'm going to be inking a drawing for you of a uh, Baroque horse wearing a bridle from the 1600s. So when we um, start with inking, um, well, the big thing with inking is you have to know what you're going to do with it afterwards, because that's going to dep depend on the paper that you use and the inking pens that you use. So this is going to be done afterwards in Copic markers, alcohol-based markers. So I do need to have a paper that is going to accept um, alcohol marker ink. So I'm using a sort of a cheapy brand, and it's by Sakura or Sakura. Oh no, sorry, it's by B Paper, and it is called the Pen Sketchers. And uh, see, excellent for pen. Pencil, pen, ink, and pens. Okay, that's what I want. And it's also recommended for Sakura Micron, Pigma pens, you know, any paper that's good for, you know, markers or pens is going to be okay for Microns. They're not special. It's just sort of a way for them to bump up the price. And it has some terribly drawn Animu guy, sort of looks like Pip from Helsing, sort of. And it's by the paper. So that's the paper that I am using today. Um, for my inking pens, my inking pen of choice is the Copic Multiliner SP. There are two types of Copic Multiliners. There's one that comes in a black barrel. Those are much cheaper, um, around two to four dollars a pen. However, they um, they're disposable, so you cannot refill them. These are much more expensive, up to eight dollars a pen, and they are refillable. And the nibs are replaceable as well. So that's very nice. They come in a variety of sizes. This, I believe, is the smallest, which is 003. I'll be using both 003 and 02 today. Some other choices available to you are the, oops, are the Sakura Microns that we mentioned, the Pigma. And uh, these are all right. They come in a variety of different colors. This one is purple and different sizes. They are not um, my favorite. The ink will fade after you erase. Um, they're all right. They're good for markers too. And then there's also the Stadler. I really like these. These put down a very nice, deep, dark ink that does not fade when you erase your pencil lines. However, these are not good for heavy applications of markers. They will smear. They are excellent, though, for uh, colored pencils or just plain old ink drawings. All right, so we're going to go in. I'm going to show you a little bit of how I ink. It won't be too special or amazing. So I'm going to start with my 002. And sometimes when you ink, you want to work from, um, I work from the top down. So anything that's going to be on top, uh, you know, on top of the horse, the topmost layer, you know, for you Photoshop people, and I work my way down. So, for instance, you can see here the mane is going over the neck. So I'm going to be wanting to ink the, the mane before I ink the neck. I'm going to start all the way at the top with this delightful little bow. And I always want to show that it is lying over the bridle. So I am going to put in some lines to show that it is over, uh, overlapping. It doesn't just lay flat like a piece of paper on top. Now sometimes I will make my pencil lines a little messier than I would want to ink. So that's why I go very slow and really make sure that I do my lines exactly the way that I want them. Because sometimes the pencil sketch is messier than what I really wanted. Why the horse has a bow on his bridle? Fashion, I suppose. I noticed in a lot of the Baroque paintings, the stallions did have some very fancy, like, taffeta bows on their uh, bridles and on their manes, which is very pretty. I quite like that. 
So I'm going to do the leather of the bridle in this um, larger O2 size. However, I'm probably going to do the hardware, the pieces of metal, in a finer nib. So I'm going to see if I do that buckle right there. I'm going to go to my 003 and I'm going to do that. It's quite difficult actually to ink when you have a camera right by your shoulder. And for the fi uh, fi uh, finer details in the metal, I'm going to use my fine pen. And I can actually go and add some little spokes to that. And because I'm going to be doing these metal pieces in probably a light yellow or bronze color, I can get fancy with my line work. If I was going to do something in a very dark color, um, a lot of your fine lines are going to um, they're going to get lost if you go over them with a dark color. So just keep that in mind. I'll also go and do a buckle. Now some people say that when they're inking they have trouble because their hands shake and they don't want to ink traditionally because they can't keep their hands still. Um, that's sort of a temporary problem. There's a couple things you can do. One, stop drinking coffee before you draw or uh, draw more, <laughs> which is usually the answer to Many of your art questions draw more. Um, you have to remember that the hand is a muscle, just like anything else. And just how a dancer is going to dance, you know, every single day to keep those muscles in shape, your hands need to be drawing to keep them in shape. And sometimes a hand, sometimes a hand that is not used to doing a lot of drawing is going to be shaky because those muscles are not trained yet. So if you feel like you can't ink because your hands are too shaky, just do it anyway. And you will find that over time your hands will gain the control that you want. I also notice that when I come back from an art block, I haven't been drawing for a while, my hands will be shaky. But then once I continue again, and I start drawing more, the shakiness goes away. Don't use that as an excuse to not draw. Okay. So there's a lot of little details in this drawing with the bridle and the bit, which is from the 1600s, and all of the mane. It would take a very long time for me to show you all this. so. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break and get back to after I ink a little bit more of the drawing.